In this video I'll be showing you what I think are the top 25 custom tracks of Mario Kart Wii. Number 25 is Daisy's Palace. This track, it's uh, pretty creative. Um, it has a few cool shortcuts and the only thing I don't like about it is this area in here. It's kind of rather plain. Now, it's weird, like this on the right there, there's like this blank room. I don't understand that. But as you come up here, there's a staircase that is really difficult to get up without hitting the wall using the flame runner. And I managed to get lucky and barely avoid hitting the wall. So yeah, go off the ramp and then you're going to be coming up this huge ramp into this like tree section. And then there's these fallen down little logs that you can trick off of, but I miserably fail getting the low tricks here. And um, then right here there's a little shortcut but I won't be showing you that yet I'll be showing you the normal route and you go around these corners and there is one final last ramp that you go off of and that is Daisy's Palace um, here's the shortcut coming up the shortcut you need a mushroom to do it like the main shortcut in the level and um, here, here I'm actually getting the low tricks there at least <laughs> so yeah look at the mini map you can see how much it cuts off and yeah so you, it's like a mud cut thingy yeah it saves quite a bit of time but you need a mushroom obviously number 24 is DS Waluigi Pinball this track is it looks almost exactly like the original like all the colors in the, the background objects and everything looks exactly like how it did in the DS version the only thing that's really missing is like the bumpers towards the end of the level but yeah like this is like a lot of people's like favorite track in the DS version but personally I think it's just a really really overrated track just like the layout and the design of it because like it has like no alternate routes no shortcuts it's just like plain road and it's very annoying on like carts for Mario Kart DS to race on to like snake you know yeah, so I think it's really overrated, but this remake is very impressive. So yeah, that's Waluigi Pinball. Number 23, this track is called Volcanic Skyway. And it was made by the same person who made Fish Dome Island, which, is a, which was a very successful track. Um, this is RC1, which was the first version of the track. Now, the reason why RC2 is not in here is because it wasn't included in Mr. Bean's updated pack because I believe it has some glitches, like it freezes the game like if you reset or something dumb like that. So yeah, normally the, the sky portion of it is much longer. It's rather short in this version. But yeah, it's still a good track. This part's cool. You dive into this cave and there's an item box right there if you're playing the... Um, Grand Prix or Wi-Fi, and you have to avoid the bats, get the box. So yeah, that is Volcanic Skyway, and there's a shortcut right here, it takes two mushrooms, you can cut off the turns, and you can avoid the wigglers, which are only present on uh, different laps. Number 22 is Banshee Boardwalk. This track is a very good remake of how Banshee Boardwalk looked on the DS and the N64. It even has the fish above there. So yeah, um, this track is rather, like, you know, straightforward. There's not many alternate routes or anything. This ramp is not trickable, unlike previous, you know, games, obviously. And, yeah, this track, nothing much more to say. It's pretty good. Um, I didn't even actually know about it. Like, I normally know about all the custom tracks when they first come out but I hadn't heard anything about this one so I was pretty surprised when I found it in the Mr. Beans update so yeah that's Banshee Boardwalk and number 21 now this track is called Incendia Castle it is one of the most known custom tracks probably in the whole custom track community um, this is because it is like revolutionary when it came out it had like so many like new things um, the thing about it is, it seem, might seem rather like plain lap one, like why is it so special, 
but every lap it changes like it changes um because it's kind of like grumble volcano like the rocks like fall and it causes different paths to be opened and other paths to be closed causing the level to change it's, it's very creative so yes we're almost done a flap one lap one is much shorter than the other laps and this is a little shortcut you can take here go off that ramp and you can avoid going around the whole turn there but you'll see on lap two and three it is no longer there and this is like the main that's like the biggest shortcut in the level really there's not really many shortcuts lap two instead of the left path being open now the center path is open so you have to take this route instead there's these weird fire things there they come out from like the ground this is like a trippy cage area kind of hurts your eyes good thing it doesn't last long <laughs> um, and now now you're brought back to the same part you were at on lap one but now instead when you make the right turn the area has like there's like a uh, a drop and you can go down and it takes you to a different route and now you're going straight and there's this fireball in the middle of the road very easy to avoid this is very creative this was like a first when it came out vertical cannons pretty cool and now I must take the right route instead because the route is now uh, the rock had fallen as you can see on the left it's not there anymore so yeah this area is kinda plain you know I mean my only complaint about this track is it's just um, it's extremely long and some parts are rather dull just like wheeling keep wheeling if you can like I mean that's like my only complaint though otherwise it's pretty good um, it's been out for a long time though so everyone knows about it this is the third path as you can see at the beginning there was a the right path that opened and the middle and left path were not there so yeah you can see a different part of the track and we'll set that fire there I don't trick off this ramp because like if you trick and you get like a weird bounce then you might hit the wall um yeah so just weaving through corners it's kinda hard to see like where to go sometimes it'd be nice if there were arrows but it doesn't matter too much um right here instead of going straight down if you trick to the right you can take this top path and there's a humongous boost panel that you can land on now you can take that and then get off and do a trick into the cannon and then when you come out you get the boost of the trick it's pretty cool it's definitely faster than taking that bottom route because the bottom route has no boost panel I'm just gonna fast forward here to get done with it and yeah it's the same as lap 2 and that's Insania Castle number 20 Bowser Jr's Fort this track is pretty creative it has a few new things about it this has a trickable cage even though it's not wavy like the maple tree one it has the same effect now right here it's very cool um, you have to do these half pipe tricks like around this S bend thing to get past it and right here too you could try to avoid them like by jumping but it's actually very difficult I actually found a small shortcut that I'll show you in a bit so yeah you go up to star cannon and keep going up these turns now right here I was like where do I go but you're supposed to drop in this hole here and it leads you to another star cannon now you go down this little road have a few more corners it does kind of remind me of the Bowser Jr's Ford and like the Mario Galaxy and the other Super Mario games so that's pretty good I mean it's, it's a little plain but I was impressed by it nonetheless this is a shortcut here you can if you jump in shroom you can skip that um, skip doing the little half pipe thing the first one so that, that's pretty cool um, number 19 Royal Raceway this one has been out a while I was extremely impressed by this one when it first came out because it reminded me of just like the original Royal Raceway and I I wish the Royal Raceway was in Mario Kart Wii but you know I guess now it is <laughs> so yeah it's kinda like Mario Raceway in the sense that there's just a lot of grass and plain road you know but um yeah just like the original missing many turbos oh well um 
right here is the cannon um, oh, straight ahead past the cannon in the original game there was like a castle and stuff like well there is the castle in this one but it looks really bad like they didn't spend much time of it you could see it on the right there here's like a shortcut you can like go over that hill and keep going but I actually think this is faster I'll show you in a sec what I'm talking about uh, this right here if you go around it and then cut through the grass there I think that's faster not sure though number 18 is Cartwood Creek this track is very similar it looks like like how the Mario circuits look you know just very standard tracks with you know grass and trees and just the road and, you know all it's missing is the piranha plants and it would remind me just of it it's a random house off to the side there I don't know why that's there they should have like somehow incorporated that into the level oh well I'll show you there's a pretty cool shortcut um I'm just gonna take the normal route first though so yeah it's just weaving out of in and out in turns there's no major shortcuts though like there's no huge grass areas because the wall is close to the grass so here if you jump and then use your shroom you can cut off both those corners with just one shroom number 17 this is Super Nintendo Rainbow Road this, um, Mr. Bean w made one of the first custom tracks, which was the, uh, version of this, but it wasn't exactly like the original. This one is, like, exactly like the original. It has the thwomps, the road is, like, the same size. What I, what I like about this track is not too long. Like, so many custom tracks are, like, three, four minutes long. This one's rather short. Now, this ramp right here, you can low trick. It's quite difficult, though. I might have made it look easy, but you have to hit the very corner and you have to jump. Number 16. Um, this track is Mushroom Peaks, and one of the first custom tracks. This is what this track originally is the one that wanted, made me want to get custom tracks. It's very difficult. You have to um, trick on some mushrooms. Don't trick on others. If you do anything wrong, you're gonna fall off. And right here on the left path, I take the left path if I don't have a mushroom, but the right path is faster. Much more difficult to do shroomless though. But I'm gonna be using a shroom, showing you. This is super difficult though, like, I mean, eventually you get used to it, but, yeah. What you want to do is you want to use your mushroom right before the second to last room, and then you trick off the last one, and land, and that's how you get past that part. Um, now, if you're playing the Grand Prix mode, if you have a bullet bill, it is so cheap, you can use that, just cut through the whole entire thing. It's, it's extremely useful. Yeah, this track is very long though. Um, yeah kind of tricky too I kind of fail here the wall you could do like the wall thing like you do on Waluigi Stadium right there and then um, as we get toward the end of the track there's this this last corner you want to start a drift and don't trick right here and then you can land on this mushroom and hit the boost panel it's rather tricky tricky number 15 is um, Bowser Castle 1 the GBA this is like just like BC3. It is very impressive, very polished. Uh, I mean, it looks like it almost could be a real track, you know. I mean, it's a simple track though, so it's cool. You can like these ramps are just like the BC3 ones, you know. Like they work the same way. You can low trick them and you know normal trick them or whatever. It's a very short track, so if you're gonna time trial it, don't accidentally set the world record right there. You can go in between the thwomp. It's pretty cool, just like on BC3 and. This is me getting all the low tricks. They're, the ramps are kind of uh, spread apart weirdly, so you have to be paying attention. They're not all equal distance apart. Wario's Lair. This was like one of my favorite tracks back then. Um, it's very long. That's like my only complaint. I'm not a fan of long tracks because when you're playing in, against Wi-Fi, like you know, against friends, uh, if someone fails, like one person just gets far ahead and it's just like racing for like three minutes, just kind of boring. Now, this is the route you take if, um, on lap one, but on lap two, you'll see, like, or I'll show you what happens, like, there's that prana plant that was there, it, it, like, opens up, or, I mean, yeah, it extends all the way, causing you not being able to take that route, so you have to take a different route. So, yeah, this, um, it's kind of similar to the design of, uh, Wario Stadium for N64, but... Wario Stadium for the N64 is really boring, besides that ultra shortcut you can do at the beginning, in my opinion. 
This ramp's really cool. He used like a bunch of those blue dash panels and combined them to make it look awesome like that. And then at the very end, instead of going around that corner, you can do a, like a mud shortcut right there if you have a shroom. And yeah, so that's like what the first lap would look like of Wario Stadium. Now here, this is the bottom route you have to take because the piranha will be in the way causing you have to take this route. It's a lot longer. Well, not a lot longer, but it is definitely longer. So, yeah. Number 13 is Sunset Forest. Um, this track is one of my favorites, actually, back when it first came out. And, I don't know, it's, there's, it's just like, there's nothing like extravagant about it except the gigantic Goombas. But I like it for some reason. This this mushroom area is a little tricky. You could fall off rather easily. Um, yeah, I suggest you don't trick on any of them. Or you might overshoot. Uh, each lap is pretty much the same. The only differences are the Goombas move. So you have to go around them. And yeah. That's Sunset Forest. Number 12 is Kanoko Cave. This track is another one of these mushroom tracks. A lot of custom tracks use the mushrooms. I think they're rather interesting. That Mushroom Gorge is one of my favorite tracks in the regular game. So yeah, um, I almost th this area is kind of tricky with the mushrooms because they're kind of close together on some of them. Now right here, instead of doing like the normal dock road, you can hit the shrooms, you know, and take shortcuts. Like I just took like a big shortcut there, and instead of going around that right corner, you can hit the shroom on the left to totally skip it. So yeah big shortcuts right there and then right there it's like uh, you're, it look like you're gonna fall off the road but there's like a invisible cannon and right here you can use a shroom and cut off that corner you know because when you use mushrooms on the mushroom pads they make you go extra far number 11 Bowser Castle 4 for the GBA um this one like the um, it's not like the walls aren't as impressive as they are on Bowser Castle 1 but everything else about it is great um, it looks just like the original, except it's missing the little fire snails toward the end of the level, but other than that, it's just how I remember it for the GBA. Right here, it's very difficult to get in between the thwomp and the wall when it's down, but I managed to get past it there. And these are low trickable, just like in the Bowser Castle 1 and Bowser Castle 3. They're a little more difficult for me, though, just because they're huge, they're like way bigger looking ramps for some reason, but they work the same way. And yeah, this track, it's rather long, you know, but there's no major shortcuts in it, unlike Bowser Castle 3. But yeah, so that's Bowser Castle 4. Number 10 is Daisy's Cruiser for the GameCube. Uh, this looks just like the original, like, I seriously thought like this would be like a beta track that Nintendo... Uh, didn't put in like it looks that good. I'm very impressed with this one. Um, Daisy Cruiser, um, it's a pretty good track. Yeah, right here there's like moving tables, but they don't move that much where they really affect you. And then when you come up to this part, you'll see there's like a hole on the right, but it's a little slower. The only thing about it is you get a mushroom box when you go down that hole to use. I mean, I guess if you're in first place and you want something, you can go down there you know, and you'll get a mushroom to dodge blue shells. Um, yeah, so that's Daisy Cruiser. There's a cool shortcut, though, right here. Instead of going straight, you can do a little spin drift thingy and take the right route, and it's definitely faster. It's pretty cool. And right here, I'll show you what it looks like when you go down the hole. I would have got an item there, and I would have got a shroom, but this is time trials, so, so yeah. There's a cannon, and yep, that's it. Number nine. This is Cannon City. It's definitely the most insane track, custom track or real track or anything in the whole entire game. The cars take these erratic routes like they're drunk drivers, you know. I mean, it's insane. They make like full 90 degree turns, like it's crazy. Yeah, so um, you could take a right or left route at the beginning. You want to take the route where the car there's less cars. I mean, they're about the same length otherwise. Right here. There's a couple different paths you can take. This is the one that I originally knew. It's the easiest one to take, but it's also the worst one to take, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, when you go off that little cannon jump thing, 
it brings you all the way into the grass and the wall, so you're like way out of position to get back on the road. So it sucks. And then right here, there's another cannon, and you don't want to trick off this, or you'll just go straight into the wall. Like as you can see, I didn't trick, and it worked fine. Now here, you want to go straight. Don't go right because it t takes way longer, and there's like a maze section. But if you go straight, you can make this turn, and you could get to this area way quicker. Now right here, I just took the standard route, but there's actually a shortcut. The shortcut though, it doesn't always count the lap, that's why I don't take it often. Okay, now here's the first shortcut. When you get to that section, go down the middle, then take this left ramp, and it puts you right here. It's much easier. And then, if you don't have a mushroom, you could take this route. It's harder than taking the right route. But yeah, you can also, as you can see, it's much nicer than landing into the wall. And then right here, here's the other shortcut. You drift, and you land, but it doesn't always count the lap if you don't, like, get far enough to the right, so it's annoying, because, I mean, you don't want to do four laps on that. Alright, this is Yoshi Valley for the N64. Very amazing recreation. Um, yeah, this one was made by the same person that made Waluigi, Pinball, and Daisy Cruiser. Um... Yeah, so I'm gonna take the fastest route first. Yeah, he put the, um, the crabs there instead of the little porcupine dudes. Um, this is the streamless shortcut right here. It's it's pretty easy to do. I mean, I I kind of cut off a little more than I normally would. That's why I barely made it. But yeah, so that's the streamless cut. And right there, there's normally an egg instead of a chain shop. But you know, you can't have everything perfect in custom tracks. That's close enough though. It was pretty good. Now this is the um, the other route, about the right route. This was my favorite custom track at one point. I mean, it's rather long and it's annoying because like you don't know, what, like you do know what place you're in. It the the place count kind of gets confused when you get in the maze. So you could be like first place, but it could say you're in second, and then you can get a thundercloud. So that's kind of lame. This is another route right here. Um. So yeah. They're all, those are like the three fastest routes, but the first one I showed was most likely the fastest one. If you don't take the shrimless cut there, um, you can get an item box and it'll give you a star or mushroom. So that's one reason not to take the cut, but the cut saves so much time, it's almost unnecessary not to. Um, this is the end of the course, it's just a grass road up. If you have a golden stream, you can cut off like this whole entire section. Number seven, this is Yoshi's Lagoon. There's a lot of shortcuts in this course, so I'm just going to show you the normal route first, and then I'll show you the shortcuts afterwards. So yeah, um, you don't want to get too close to the edges, because if you just touch the edge, it'll make you like fly off. It, they're kind of like walls, edges. It's, it's really weird. It's probably my only complaint about it. So yeah, you go enter this cannon. And yeah, the route I'm taking right now makes the course seem so much longer, because I'm taking no shortcuts. On the left, you can go off that shroom and go back on the road. It's almost unnecessary, though. It's about the same time. And... Yep, there is one little shortcut I'll be taking, though, because there's no point in not taking it. I mean, th the other way is so much... Uh, it's just so dumb not to take this shortcut. I mean... Um, okay. Right here, go, just go straight and hit the mushroom. If you go all the way around, it's, like, really difficult. It's not really flame runner friendly and you know that shortcut's super easy to pull off so yeah that's a lap on Yoshi Lagoon now here's the most useful shortcut you need uh... you don't even need a mushroom to do this actually you need a trick off that and trick and don't trick or trick it doesn't really matter it's kinda difficult though and this one right here it's pretty cool you don't need to, to trick or to use a mushroom there but that one is rather useful. This one is not useful though. It's extremely difficult and like barely saves any time, I don't think, if it even saves time. So yeah, the first two though are definitely ones you're going to want to use. And that's Yoshi the Good. This is number six. This is Yoshi Circuit. <laughs> Three Yoshi tracks in a row. Um, this first shortcut is uh, over the lake. You can't do it trimless. In the old games, you could do it trimless, but this one not, I don't even think you could do it with the magic cruiser shrimpless because the gap's rather large. So yeah, there's a cool tunnel shortcut, but you'll see that in a bit. Yeah, this is almost exactly like the original, 
if you look at the mini map, it's shaped just like Yoshi, which is rather cool. Um, that's like the only resemblance it really has to Yoshi, otherwise, I mean, you know. And like the shell thingy. So yeah, this was on the DS version as well as the and or the GameCube version. This is the shortcut right here. There's invisible boost panels inside the tunnel, and you could trick off this last ramp. And that's the cut. Number five, Delfino Island. This track is also one of my favorites because of the shortcut I found that I like a lot. I'll show you after I do a lap. This is like, I guess, the normal route you take, except that's kind of unnecessary to go off that boost panel. But yeah, this is like the normal route you take without mushrooms. Um, the original version of this track was like way different, but he improved it and added this whole dock section here. It looks a lot better. This is a shortcut right here. Um, you could like combine two routes to make a much faster route. Um, yeah, so now we're back on like the main road section. Um, yeah, let's show you the other routes down at the dock section after this lap. It'd be cool if this, like, bridge worked like the Delfino Square Bridge, but I don't know if they're able to do that yet. Still, pretty good track. Um, right here, this is a shortcut. You use the mushroom on the boost panel, and you could totally skip that turn. It saves a lot of time. And right here, instead of doing that double route thing, you can take this route. Um... It's about the same. I think this one's a little slower though. And then, if you want to be really safe, I guess you could go all the way around. It seems unnecessary. I mean, I don't know why this route's even there because it's way slower, and the other routes are just as easy to take, probably. So yeah, those are the three different routes. Okay, now we're on number four. And um, haunted woods. This track was made by the same person that made Wario's Lair. And, um, yeah, so, this track has amazing scenery. It's super detailed. That's my favorite part about it. On the right there, there's, like, a mansion. It's a little slower, but there's, like, items in there that will give you specific items. Like, you can get, like, an automatic mega mushroom and automatic triple green shells if you go inside there when there's item boxes. And on the right, there's a shortcut. I'll be showing you that after I do a normal lap of completion. And, um, yeah, there's these white chain chomps that go around. Um, yeah, and then there's also, like, little mud puddles that match the same color as the road on certain parts. So you gotta be careful. I don't know if you could see it, but, um, let's see. Let's see if I could see one of them. Um... I think this corner coming up right here, yeah, see there's uh, bats and there's a mud puddle right there, so you have to go super tight or extremely wide to dodge that. Now this trick right here, you can do a one shroom. You could cut off both the corners and jump over the lake. And then if you chain a star into another star or a golden shroom, you could take this mud shortcut right here. This shortcut saves so much time. Just look at the mini map. Instead of going through that zigzagging, you just take this like two turn path. And yeah, so those are the shortcuts. Number three. This track is made by the same person that created Volcanic Skyway. It's called Fish Dome Island. And this is the fourth version of it, I believe. The updated version here has, like, the water puddles there. Used to be holes. Now they're water puddles, obviously. And, um, there's added enemies and stuff to it. The mushroom pads on the right there are now lower. That creates a cool shortcut that I'll show you after I do a lap here. And, yeah, you can do a low jump if you clip the corner of that. It's a cool track. I like it so much because of the length of it. It's fun to play against other people. And that's the most important thing. There used to be a lava pillar there, and now there's a thwomp. And, yeah, so that's the track. Here's some shortcuts. You can use a mushroom, bounce off these, and cut off the corner and then right here this is uh, probably not intended to be in it you can it's very difficult you can shroom and jump and do that cut now it's really cool this track has like a different texture to it it's nighttime um, it looks really cool looking very uh, purplish tint neon color thingy um, yeah so not much more to say about it rather than 
how awesome this track is. I almost failed to cut there. Um. Yeah. So. Nothing much more to say. This track is pretty awesome. Hope this guy makes more tracks. Okay, number two. <laughs> this track is another recreation of a different uh, retro track. GameCube Bowser's Castle. GCN Bowser's Castle. This track is probably, or is the best, in my opinion, the best uh, retro recreation track. Um, the original version of this had a few flaws, like this ramp right here. Like you could trick and land on the upper layer, but he changed it into a, a different tricking ramp, so you can't do that, which is good because the lap didn't count anyway. And yeah, this is just like the original. Like seriously, I mean, it almost looks like Nintendo could have made this. <laughs> um, the turns are very difficult. I mean, if you don't get the right angle and stuff, um, especially this one, you have to go way wide to do this. But yeah, I have I've played the track quite a bit, so I know how to do it. Now instead of making this doing this right path here, you can do this shortcut. And sometimes the lava pillar comes up, making it extremely difficult to pull off. This Bowser's fireballs take a right route and then jump left. So it's pretty easy to get hit by them. And those fire pillars are just like the ones in Bowser Castle. There's no shortcuts, but yeah, that track is pretty awesome. And now, the number one track. This track was created recently. It's called Six King Labyrinth, made by the same person who created Mushroom Peaks and Incendia Castle. Um, at the very beginning, you go off that star cannon, and you don't see that for the rest of the race. Like, it's not there for lap two or three. It just brings you into the track, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, what's so cool about this one is every lap it is different, and there's lots of different routes you can take. I mean. I think the name Six King comes from like I guess six different routes or something. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, you'll see these gates there, and they have they say something on the, and you'll see. I'll show you in a second after I do a lap showing what a normal lap looks like in the course. But yeah, like the first lap is actually the longest one, unlike Incendia Castle, where the laps get longer each time. This time they get shorter because like the gates like they end up opening up new uh they open up new routes to take or you know shorter routes pretty much so yeah my only complaints about this track are this area right here it's rather dull there's not much to it it's just straight path no enemies no boost panels or anything it's kind of boring um all mr bean's tracks are rather long you know so i've got used to that but those that's the only bad thing about it and now I'm going to show you what these gates say. Now if you look closely, they have numbers on them. Right here, that one has number 2 on it, which means it opens on lap 2. And this one has number 3 on it, which means it opens on lap 3. And yes, there's these boulders. They're kind of random. There's also a wiggler somewhere in there. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I don't know if you'll ever see it actually in this video. Um... So yeah, you get the point of how this course works. There's the Wiggler. Anyway, moving on to lap two. This is the first gate that opens. And you could go down this like desert route, and then it brings you into a snow route. It's pretty cool. And they're pretty difficult turns. But it is faster than taking the route you took on lap one, for sure. But I'm pretty sure it's not the fastest route. I'm pretty sure this route I'm going to show you next is faster. Instead of making the left or the right turns, you go straight, because that gate is now open. Pass these boulders, and make a ton of zigzag turns. And pass the wiggler. And yes, it brings you out to the same area. Now, now this part, look, you can go straight down that, instead of having to make the extra zigzag. But there's still one gate you have to go around here. But it's better than having to go around two, like on lap one. And... This is lap three now. Now, um, this route right here is, uh, it might be the best route to take if you don't have mushrooms. I'm not sure, but this is the one I use. Now, all these gates are open. You can go straight through rather than having to go through all those corners and crap. And it brings you to this star cannon, which shoots you really far. 
keeps going all the way up to there. It's pretty good. And yeah, so now look at this. You can go straight through. Don't have to go through any of those paths. And it brings you out to the Star Cannon. And now this is the fastest route to take. But you can't take it unless it's lap 3 and you have a mushroom. It's a little bit difficult too. Um, now what you do is you mushroom and you jump. And there's a little hole right there you can go through. Normally there's a gate there and you hit a dead end. And right there there's a, a wall. It's really not a wall though. It fools you. And there's a series of star cannons now. It's definitely faster to do this route because as you can see this one brings you all the way up to the end there. Into another one. And yeah, that's it. Uh, special thanks to all the creators of these custom tracks. Their names will be in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment and subscribe.